Women will spend years changing her man and then wonder what the hell happened to the guy that she fell in love with. And they inadvertently do this stuff. This is this is just part of female nature. Um, it can take it can take quite a few years. And a lot of the times you don't notice it happening, if I'm being honest. Uh, it just it just happens through small concessions here. Like it starts with basic stuff like, hey, Rich, put your white socks in the white hamper and your dark socks in the dark hamper and don't brush your teeth over there because you're going to get toothpaste on the carpet. And like, you know, small things like this here and there, whereas, you know, in the past previously, you just kind of threw your laundry wherever you felt like it and you'd walk all over the house without any clothes on, brushing your teeth wherever the hell you wanted because you're a man and your entire house is your castle. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you start to get all these restrictions and limitations and boundaries put around your life. And as you comply with each one of them, you start going through the process of betatization through a thousand concessions. It turns men from a pet that she loves and admires into a plow horse that she sees nothing more than a utility, a utility that she is going to emotionally abuse and doesn't want to bang enthusiastically anymore. If you aren't aware and you don't control the frame of the relationship, then chances are this is going to happen to you. It will make you weak, soft, poor, undesirable to your woman. This process of betatization by a thousand concessions is a genuine threat especially if you cohabitate and get into a relationship and if you have kids. Guys that lose access to their kids, I can't tell you how many women I met after I got divorced with children in tow that were all divorced, of course, that left their husbands because eight out of 10 times it's women leaving the men. And the lack of contact the father has with his own children, the amount of money he flows to her, the amount of bitching that you got to listen to about that, all because she deemed the guy as a beta. And I've seen some of these guys, right? Like you see them like, you know, the younger uh, photos where they have like the, um, you know, the barbed wire, like around their biceps sort of thing. Like they were dudes at one point, many of these guys, but a lot of men go through this process in a marriage. And if you're not managing the frame, and this is where frame really matters quite a, quite a bit. A lot of people go, what's frame rich? You know, what is this whole frame thing? In every relationship, one person enters the other's frame. Okay. The man enters her frame or she enters his frame. Happens all the time. Sometimes it's back and forth, right? But at the end of the day, if she's not operating in your frame and you're operating in her frame, you will go through betatization through a thousand concessions. This is where the risks start to you know, become problematic. If you get divorced, you lose custody of your kids. You might only see them every other weekend and like a Wednesday night for dinner. My uh, lawyer calls that the screw over daddy deal. Uh, these things will happen to beta men more often than alpha men. Women don't divorce alpha guys. They don't They don't run off and start banging somebody else or hanging out with Kevin from sales or Steve from accounting. By the way, Steve from accounting edited my book. Did you know that? If you follow me on Instagram, you'd know that by now. But that's how it goes. They just don't run off on guys that they're uh, happy with, guys that they look at and they're hypergamous hindbrain is like, yeah, everything's fine. I dig this guy's vibe. Why would I want to do anything with Kevin from sales? They just don't. Um, anyway, so often you'll get introduced to her family, you know, around the holidays. We got Thanksgiving coming up. I know some places you guys will be able to get together and other places you just won't because of the scandemic, but it is what it is. But, you know, you'll be introduced to family and, you know, ah, this is rich. You know, the entrepreneur, blah, blah, blah. And they'll tell the big story and everybody gathers around and they're like, oh, he's a swell guy and he's so classy and all that sort of stuff. And they all fondly look upon him. But over time, and you'll see this five years, seven years, 10 years down the road, the woman's interest in her man wanes slowly over time. You know, they say, uh, I think it was Esther Perel in one of her books, um, desire in women just tanks. It just goes straight off the cliff. Okay. Very, very quickly over time. Whereas with guys, it's a lot slower. Why does that happen? I think a lot of it has to do with where we live in, you know, the world today and the way society is. But I also think it has a lot to do with the way that guys manage relationships. Like too many guys bend the knee to women far too often for very little value whatsoever. You ever set stand up? I think it was Chris Rock or Tucker, you know, just talks about the stamp. Just get a stamp. Just stamp everything. Yes, 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 honey. Yes, 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 yes. That's betatization, right? You're saying yes to everything. You're yielding. You're bending the knee. It's okay to say no, guys. It's absolutely, totally fine and okay. Nope, we're not doing that. 
And she'll start chirping you. Some women do anyway. Nope. Not listening to that nonsense either. Get your golf clubs and hit the, uh, you know, hit the pars. Go to the gym. Do whatever you like. Don't listen to that crap. <laughs> 